Hey there, fellow grad students. Test coming up on motivational interviewing. I have 12 questions to get you ready for your next test. Ready? Let's learn psych fast. Question one. A patient tells you, I dreamed I was stoned. When I woke up, I felt emotionally drained as though I hadn't rested well. Which response should you use to clarify the patient's comment? A. It sounds as though you were uncomfortable with the content of your dream. B. I understand what you're saying. Bad dreams leave me feeling tired too. C. So you feel as though you did not get enough quality sleep last night? Or D. Can you give me an example of what you mean by stoned? The answer is D. Can you give me an example of what you mean by stoned? The technique of clarification is therapeutic and it helps the nurse examine the meaning of the patient's statement. Asking for a definition of stone directly asks for clarification. Restating that the patient is uncomfortable with the dream's content is parroting, a non-therapeutic technique. The other responses, they fail to clarify the meaning of the patient's comment. Question two, a patient diagnosed with schizophrenia tells you the CAA is monitoring us through the fluorescent lights in this, in this room. Be careful of what you say. Which response is the most therapeutic? A. Uh, let's talk about something other than the CIA. B. It sounds like you're concerned with your privacy. C. The CIA is prohibited from operating in healthcare facilities. Or is it D. You've lost touch with reality, which is a symptom of your illness. The answer is B. It sounds like you're concerned about your privacy. It is important not to challenge the patient's belief, even if they are unrealistic. Challenging undermines the patient's trust in the provider. You should try to understand the underlying feelings or thoughts that the patient's messages conveys. The correct response uses therapeutic technique of reflection. The other comments are non-therapeutic. Asking to talk about something other than the concern at hand is changing the subject. Saying that the CAA is prohibited from operating in healthcare facilities gives false reassurance. Stating that the patient has lost touch with reality is truthful, but it's uncompassionate. Question three. The patient says, my marriage is just great. My spouse and I always agree. You observe the patient's foot moving continuously as the patient twirls a shirt button. You conclude that the patient's communication is A, clear, B, precise, C, mixed, or D, inadequate. The answer is C, mixed. Mixed messages involve the transmission of conflicting or incongruent messages by the speaker. The patient's verbal message that all was well in the relationship was modified by the nonverbal behaviors denoting anxiety. Data are not present to support the choice of verbal message being clear, explicit, or inadequate. Question four. Which technique will best communicate to the patient that you are interested in listening? Is it A, restating a feeling or thought the patient has expressed? B, asking a direct question such as, did you feel angry? C, making a judgment about the patient's problem. Or D, saying, I understand what you're saying. The answer is A, restating a feeling or thought the patient has expressed. So restating allows the patient to validate your understanding of what has been communicating. Restating is an active listening technique. Judgments should be suspended in provider-patient relationship. Close-ended questions such as, did you feel angry? Ask for specific information rather than show an understanding. When the provider simply states that he or she understands the patient words, the patient has no way of measuring the understanding. Question five. A patient discloses several concerns and associated feelings. If the NP wants to seek clarification, which comment would be appropriate? A. What are the common elements here? B. Tell me again about your experiences. C. Am I correct in understand that? Or D. Tell me everything from the beginning. The answer is C. Uh, am I correct in understand that dot dot dot? 
So asking, am I correct and understand, that permits clarification to ensure that both the NP and the patient share mutual understanding of the communication. Asking about the common elements encourages comparison rather than clarification. The remaining responses are implied questions that suggest the NP was not listening. Question six, a patient tells you, I don't think I'll ever get out of here. Select the most therapeutic response. A, don't talk that way. Of course, you'll get to leave here from here. Or B, keep up the good work and you certainly will. C, you don't think you're making progress? Or D, everyone feels that way sometimes. The answer is C, you don't think you're making progress? So by asking if the patient does not believe that progress has been made, you are reflecting by putting into words what the patient is hinting. By making communication more explicit, issues are easier to identify and resolve. The remaining options are non-therapeutic techniques. So telling the patient not to talk that way is disapproving. Saying that everyone feels that way at times minimizes feelings. Telling the patient that good work will always result in success is falsely reassuring. Question seven, during the first interview with a parent whose child died in a car accident, you feel empathetic and you reach out to touch the patient's hand. Select the correct analysis of your behavior. A, it shows empathy and compassion. It will encourage the patient to continue to express feelings. B, the gesture is premature. The patient's cultural and individual interpretation of touch is unknown. C, the patient would perceive the gesture as intrusive and overstepping boundaries. D, the action is inappropriate. Psychiatric patients should not be touched. The answer is B. The gesture is premature. The patient's cultural and individual interpretation of touch is unknown. Touch has various cultural and individual interpretations. You should refrain from using touch until all assessment can be made regarding the way in which the patient will perceive touch. The other options present prematurely drawn conclusions. Question eight. Oh, by the way, please like this video and subscribe. Question eight. A black patient says to a white provider, uh, there's no sense in talking. You wouldn't understand because you live in a white world. What's the best action to take? A, explain, yes, I do understand. Everyone goes through the same experiences. B, say, uh, please give me an example of something you think I wouldn't understand. C, reassure, that the pa reassure the patient that you interact with people from all cultures or D, change the subject to one that is less emotionally disturbing. Answer is B. Say, uh, please give me an example of something you think I would not understand. Having the patient speak in specifics rather than globally will help you understand the patient's perspective. This approach will help you engage the patient. Reassurance and changing the subjects, those are not therapeutic techniques. Question nine, when a female Mexican-American patient and a female nurse sit together, the patient often holds the nurse's hand. The patient also links arms with the nurse when they walk. The nurse is uncomfortable with this behavior. Which analysis is most accurate? Is it A, the patient is accustomed to touch during conversation as are members of many Hispanic subcultures? B, the patient understands that touch makes the nurse uncomfortable and controls the relationship based on that factor. C, the patient is afraid of being alone. When touching the nurse, the patient is reassured and comforted. Or is it D, the patient is trying to manipulate the nurse using a nonverbal technique? The answer is A, the patient is accustomed to touch during conversation, as are members of many Hispanic subcultures. So the most likely answer is the patient's behavior is culturally influenced. Hispanic women frequently touch women they consider to be their friends. Although the other options are possible, they are less likely. Question 10. A Puerto Rican American patient uses traumatic body language when describing emotional discomfort. 
which analysis most likely explains the patient's behavior. The patient A. has hysteronic personality, B. believes dramatic body language is sexually appealing, C. wishes to impress staff with a degree of emotional pain, or D. belongs to a culture in which dramatic body language is, is the norm. D. Belongs to a culture in which dramatic body language is the norm. So members of Hispanic American subcultures tend to use high affect and dramatic body languages as they communicate. The other options are more remote possibilities. Question 11. A patient is having difficulty making a decision. You have mixed feelings about whether to provide advice. Which principle usually applies? Given advice. A. Is really helpful. B. Fosters independence. Or C. It helps the patient develop feelings of personal adequacy. Did you get it? The answer is A. It's rarely helpful. You know, given advice fosters dependence on the provider and interferes with the patient's right to make personal decisions. It robs the patients of the opportunity to weigh alternatives and develop problem-solving skills. Furthermore, it contributes to the patient's feeling of personal inadequacy. It also keeps the provider in control and feeling powerful. Question 12. A patient with acute depression states, God is punishing me for my past sins. What is the most therapeutic response? A. You sound very upset about this. B. God always forgives us of our sins. C. Why do you think you're being punished? Or is it D? If you feel this way, you should talk to your minister. A. Th the answer is A. You sound very upset about this. So by reflecting on the patient's comment, you're providing a therapeutic technique to encourage sharing for perceptions and feelings. The correct responses reflect probing. Sorry, the incorrect responses reflect probing close-ended comments, and given advice, all of which are non-therapeutic. Alrighty, you've completed. I hope this was very helpful for you and you do well on your test and you have a better understanding of motivational interviewing. Please share this with a classmate as well. Thanks.